Hey there, I'm Helper Wesley, and in this video, we'll be talking about leaderboards. Leaderboards can be amazing for driving engagement with your game, so it makes me really happy to show you how easy it is to use in GDevelop. After you finish setting up your leaderboard, it's basically just these three actions, and then you're done. But first, you need to register your game. And you can do that by going up to File, going to the Game Dashboard, and if your game is already registered, it'll be here on this list, and you can just press Manage Game. But if it's not registered, you need to press this button. If you export your game online, it will automatically register your game as well. But now that we have the leaderboard test project here in front of us, I can press Manage Game. And then if I press Leaderboards, I'll be brought to this screen where I can create a new leaderboard. From here you can pick from a drop down menu of existing leaderboards in your game, add new leaderboards by clicking here, change your leaderboards name by clicking here, you can reset the whole leaderboard by pressing here, you can switch between lower or higher is better, and this will determine whether or not it's visible on leluo.io for people to see outside of your game. And from here you can customize your leaderboard. So if I type in gold, you'll see down below it's been added to the end of the number. And the test number is being rounded to the zero decimal point. So it's only 15. But if I change this to 3, it will round to the third decimal point. And if I put in a negative 3, it will round in the other direction. But we're just going to leave that at zero. And then finally we can set how the names are displayed on the leaderboard. I usually set it to only the best entries but you can pick whatever works best for your leaderboard. And now that our leaderboard exists, we can go back to the event sheet, where this first event is sending the score using this action, save player score. And now that we have a leaderboard, we can click here and here, and now we can pick from a drop-down menu for our existing leaderboards. And then in the next box, you put in whatever kind of variable you want to save as the score whether that be a time, or a point count, or whatever. In this case, we have a scene variable called score. And then in the last box, you put the player's name. And for this, we're using the text input object. And in order to tell what's written in the text input object, we can go to the expression builder, type in input, and down here we'll have a selection for the text of a text input object. If we select that, then we can select our text input object, and there's the expression for knowing what's written inside of your text input object. And this next event will display the leaderboard. All we have to do is select the leaderboard that we made. And then finally, when the leaderboard is finished loading, we want to pause this scene that we're on and go to another one. In this case, the scene is called leaderboard. As you can see, it's blank, and the only event has the same condition but inverted, and when that condition is met, it sends us back to the previous scene that we just had paused. So now to see that in action, I can change the score here by pressing up and down, and I can type in a name, and if I press the tick, the score will have been sent. And now if I change the score again, and change this to another name, I can submit the score again, and then if I change the score and name again, and press the tick, it'll submit the score again. And now if I press the home button, it will begin to load the leaderboard, and then once the leaderboard is loaded, it will pause this scene and move to the leaderboard scene so that nothing in your game is being affected while the leaderboard is up. And there we go. We have 7 gold, 5 gold, and 1 gold for the first place, second place, and third place player. And now if I exit this, it will take me back to the original scene that was paused. A big problem with this is that you need to lock off the game so your players can't continually be sending in new scores. So in this example game, for example, when you die, type in your name for the score, and press submit, it goes directly to the leaderboard, and doesn't give you the chance to type in a different name. And then when you exit the leaderboard, it takes you back to the beginning of the game again, so you have to get a new score before you're able to submit. And this is what those events look like. If you click into the input object, and it is your focus, it will show the submit button. This way you're prepped to type in a name, and you don't accidentally submit 
before typing in a name. And then when you have typed in a name and you press the submit button, it both sends the score and starts displaying the leaderboard. And that's it. It's really as simple as that. If you want to further look into how leaderboards work, I have a link to the wiki and some game examples down below. As always, be sure to comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorial you want to see next. I've been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.